Hello, here is a question number one. Let me read it. It reads, uh, current I flowing along axis of one face of a cube as shown in the figure one that produces magnetic field as uh, B naught J cap at the center of the cube. Consider another identical cube where current I flows along the path shown in the figure second. How much magnetic field exists at the center of the second cube? So situation is this, that is a first figure. In this first figure, uh, this one square form, uh, current is flowing, which current is I. And if you look at the center point, the center point has a magnetic field given by this, B naught J cap. J cap is the direction here, so the field is going to be perpendicular to the uh, plane of the square on which the current was flowing. And its value is given by B naught. So the magnitude is B naught and the direction is perpendicular. The same thing has been drawn here separately. So if current flows on a square loop, then at the distance, uh, you can say half of the edge of this loop and at the central point is going to be B naught and perpendicular to the loop. Now we, we know this point and we are going to use this point to find out the magnetic field at the center of this fi cube, figure two. Now if you look at the figure two, the current is moving in this kind of path. Now what we can do, we can imagine a branch here, we can imagine a branch here and a branch here. Though they, these three branches do not have any current initially uh, and we can always think of that if there is no current, the current is flowing in both the direction by the same amount, so net current is zero. So by doing this kind of construction, we can look at this figure. So if we connected this branch, this branch and this, so we can think of a square loop this. This square loop can be considered of a current I. So there will be I current passing through this, I current passing through this and I was passing this. So that becomes complete loop. Then another complete square loop you can visualize which is in the front facing face and this will have a current I1, I here, the same current here, and the same current in this fashion, and then same current in this fashion. So you'll find in this branch effectively, uh, zero current will be existing. Similarly, uh, when we are going to watch one more loop, which is downside, and in the sense it is given, so here has to be a I current, so effectively this will have a zero current. And to complete it, there is going to be I current, earlier it was I. So these three red color branches are going to have as if uh, they have a zero current, but by construction, they are creating three square loops. And because of one square loop, uh, we know how much uh, the field is. So what will be the field because of three square loops? We can think of. And uh, since here directions are involved, so and these are vector quantities, so we need to add these three fields. Now, because of this one, let's call this loop, this one is one. So because of the this one as the center point is going to be along this J cap. So B not J cap. If we look for this front facing uh, loop, because of this, the O point will be lying back side. So the field will be away, that means opposite to the x direction, that means minus i cap. So one will be in the j cap, another will be in minus i cap. And if we look this uh, last one, which is at the bottom, and we use right hand rule, so the field is going to come at the upper direction, which is in the j cap, that means k cap direction, z axis, that means k cap direction. So net field is going to be as b naught j cap, because of this one b naught minus i cap because of this front one and b naught k cap because of this bottom one. So we can say the net field is going to be b naught times minus i cap plus j cap plus k cap and you'll find c option says the same thing. Hence c becomes the correct option. So this is uh, the way that is superposition we can use to find it out. Okay, thank you.